Yes, um, I just came from London last week, and um, our whole together as we're talking right now, and I've seen tentative dates for um, two gigs in um, in Switzerland. One will definitely be in Zurich, mm -hmm. and that looks like it will be around the third week of October mm -hmm. this year. <laughs> Not next year, this year. <laughs> and... Um, then it looks like we'll also be doing one concert in the um, eastern part of Switzerland, mm -hmm. and um, that those two are being put together right now. And Switzerland is going to be then fitted in sometime in the third week of October, yeah. which is part of the whole Master of Puppets European, you know, tour, which starts in September, then goes for two months. Mm -hmm. Also, Lars erzählt, dass sie gerade am Zusammenstellen sind von äh, Europa Tournee. Uh, sie sind jetzt gerade von London gekommen. Es sieht so also aus, dass in der dritten Woche vom Oktober von diesem Jahr äh, ein Konzert stattfindet, stattfindet, vermutlich in Wettigen. Und dann wird noch ein Konzert in der Ostschweiz stattfinden. Man ist aber jetzt an dem Zusammenstellen. Aber es wird also garantiert heißen, dass im Herbst äh, die Metallica bei uns in der Schweiz werden auftreten. Eine nächste Frage kommt von Stefan aus Matra, nämlich gerne wissen, zu welcher Gattung Heavy Metal sich die Metallica selber zählen. Uh, Lars, somebody wants to know, uh, what kind of Heavy Metal Metallica play? Or uh, how would you name your style of music? Yeah, I, questions like that, um, I always find very difficult to answer because mm -hmm. I myself personally, it also goes for the rest of the guys in the band, we don't really like these labels mm -hmm. that... Um, you know, people put on us because I think what we do, unlike so many other heavy metal bands, we don't just do one kind of sort of heavy metal. I think um, some people call us speed. Um, I don't think that really fits because we also do a lot of slower and different things. And people are always very interested in putting labels on, you know, what we do mm. or what other bands do. And it's like, I think the label that says it all is Metallica. <laughs> you know, that's the name of the band and that to me is the best label. We play, you know, Metallica music. Um, if there's one word, I think maybe, that best describes the overall thing that we do, I would say that the one word would maybe be power. Mm. Because, you know, I think we make sure that If we play fast, we have a lot of power. If we play slow, we still have a lot of power. You can still have a lot of power when you play melodic. You can have power That's right. when you play heavy. You can even have power, as we found out on the new album, maybe through a bit of emotion and mm -hmm. some real subtle things. So, you know, just these labels, I don't like them. But if there's one that I have to go with, I think the sort of just, it's powerful. Mm. <laughs> you know, but I still prefer to just call it Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> also, as first, I would like to say, I hate on the Schubladen, wo man ihn reingeht, wo man Metallica reingeht. Äh, sie selber würden eigentlich sagen, ihr Sound, das ist einfach Metallica Sound, das ist immer ganz klar. Und wenn es vielleicht noch ein Wort gibt, äh, sei das Power, also Kraft, äh, sie würden an sich mit verschiedensten Stilmitteln schaffen und hätten es nicht gern, wenn man ihnen einfach so einen Stempel würde aufdrücken würde, sei das jetzt Speed oder sei das sonst irgendwas. Ihre Musik ist einfach in erster Linie Metallica. Der Beat aus Bern möchte wissen, auf was Metallica ihren Erfolg zurückführen. Äh, Metallica hat es bekommen, The top act, I think, in its style. Uh, what are the reasons of this tremendous success? The I think, um, I mean, the basic reasons for when a band becomes successful on a large scale is um, because in heavy metal today everything has already been done before, and you know, so many bands sound the same. When a band like, say, Metallica or any other the bigger heavy metal mm. bands that are sort of moving up, when they become successful, is I think it's because they have something new and different and maybe fresh it's like um, when Metallica started out in you know on the west coast in California four years ago there was not really any band anywhere that sounded like we did and you know the bands that get the biggest are the bands that sort of do something new first mm. and then you always have you know, a lot of other bands follow them but of course the band who do it first you know take um you have a thousand bands that sound like ACDC but the reason ACDC is the biggest because yeah. they did it first yeah, nobody want to know the rest of, of, of the groups right because they're just copying the ACDC yeah. sound so people tell us yes Metallica have sort of a new and different sound and um, I think that's the main reason why we're becoming so successful it's just different the last thing that was the only question was if the band is or if they have something new made also when Uh, tausend Bands der ACDC nachher machen, dann ist ja halt trotzdem ACDC die Band, die diesen Stil spielt. Und bei Metallica ging es genau gleich. Sie sagen, wo sie vor vier Jahren angefangen haben, gut vier Jahre, 
es ist einfach neu gesehen und vor allem frisch. Sie haben Power gehabt und haben etwas Neues gemacht. Und ich glaube, dass das der Erfolg ist, wo, wo, äh, wo ihnen das eben auch gebracht hat. In diesem Zusammenhang passt auch eine Frage von Roger aus Mörgen. Und zwar, wie lange meint Metallica, dass ihre Ideen lange, äh, um solche Musik zu machen und damit Erfolg zu haben? How long do you think uh, this, gone, this whole story gonna last? The sound of Metallica, how long gonna last that? Uh, you know, I mean, to be totally honest with you, we just take it sort of, you know, step at a time. It's like, we just finished, you know, recording the third album. Now we have the tour plans made out, you know, for the next year. We do, you know, five months in the States mm. supporting Ozzy Osbourne. Then we do, you know, three months in Europe. Then we do Japan. Then it's like we do the next album. And it's like... I don't think any of us in the band look further right ahead now. than what the plans are. I mean, I can't even, right now as we're speaking, just because we just finished the third album, I can't even, like, think about the fourth album yet. Mm. So it's like we're just taking it sort of a step at a time. We just finished the album now. We know we'll be touring for the next year, and, I mean, who knows what <laughs> will happen. But I think um, because the level of the way that Metallica is getting su successful as opposed to a lot of bands, especially in the States, is that Metallica is building the level of success slowly and steadily, step by step, step, by step. and mm -hmm. instead of uh, some bands in America get very big like overnight and then the next night they're gone. Mm -hmm. and I think it's better in the long run to be successful just slowly year by year and then saying maybe three or four years Metallica be will be one of the biggest bands in the world. And I'd rather have it happen that way mm -hmm. than just sort of overnight. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Ab der gleichnamigen LP aus dem 84. Machen wir weiter im Kreuzfeuer mit dem Lars Alrik von der Metallica und zwar mit euren Fragen. Da findet zum Beispiel der Ohad lustig aus Basel, dass der James Hetfield zwar nicht der schlechte, aber auch kein Weltklasse-Sänger sei, während der Rest der Band nur aus Supermusiker würde bestehen oder einfach gesagt fragt der Ohad, warum Metallica eigentlich keinen anderen Sänger sucht. <lacht> Next question. <lacht> no. um Why don't we replace the singer? Um, let's see, how do I answer that in some serious fashion? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I could answer it in non-serious fashion, but if you want a serious answer, I think um, there was a few years ago when we were just starting out that we didn't, and especially James himself, didn't feel comfortable with sort of being the singer and felt that... Uh, you know, it'd be good to try and get someone else in the band who wasn't playing guitar, also just have a front man, a singer, who the only thing he would do mm -hmm. would just be that job. I think over the last couple of years, James has developed his own sort of vocal style and um, is becoming very, very confident with his job of, you know, mm -hmm. sort of singing and, you know, he playing knows the rhythm his guitar. place in the band. Yeah, exactly. he's sort of developing and he's getting mm -hmm. very confident with it. And um, I think... Metallica's, you know, part of Metallica's original sound is definitely also, you know, James's, um, mm -hmm. you know, vocals and to um, try and even, I mean, even imagine trying changing that now, it's like, we don't. <laughs> you know, two years ago, it was a bit different, but um, the only one singer that we could picture in the band um, didn't want to join the band and it's like, when he said no, it was like, all right, we'll just carry on. <laughs> and just James is really developing his own style mm. and confidence and to change it now would be just wrong, period. <laughs> so. Okay, I just translate to yeah. <laughs> Also, die Frage natürlich hat, hat Lars ein bisschen vor sich gewiesen, das ist ganz klar, weil er steht auf der James Hetfield. Er hat allerdings müssen sagen, dass der James sich entwickelt hat müssen. Also er hat sich am Anfang von der Karriere vielleicht nicht ganz so wohl gefühlt in der Band was aber vor allem mit seiner eigenen Rolle zu tun hat. Und Lars hat das Gefühl, dass der James sich eben wahnsinnig weiterentwickelt hat und heute sich sehr, sehr stark mit der Band identifiziert, auch stark dahinter steht und sich sehr, sehr wohl mit seiner Rolle fühlt. Und es gibt also im Moment überhaupt keine Diskussion, äh, über so etwas nachzudenken, den Sänger von dieser Band zu ersetzen. Äh, es ist der falsche Zeitpunkt und Lars hat also das Gefühl, dass der James sehr, sehr gut zu ihnen wird passen Creeping Death, die Metallica bei ihrer 84er Maxi, respektiv ist die Nummer auch zu finden auf dem Album Ride the Lightning. Und Schlag auf Schlag geht es weiter mit den Fragen von euch an Lars Alrik und zwar von der Patrick. Ob es einem als Musiker nicht langweilig wird, sagen wir auf einer Welttournee, wo x Monate geht, immer die gleichen Stücke zu spielen. Uh. <lacht> well, I think, you know, when you do them every night in a row for six months, I mean, I don't think it ever gets boring. Sometimes um, 
you may be you have a term in English called going through the motions uh -huh. which is happens sometimes because you know when do every night you know for a hundred nights in a row sometimes obviously you feel better than others and they have you have a term called going through the motions which happens you know once in a while but you generally, have to go through you just sort of do it you know yeah. so I think but generally I think the Metallica audiences all over the world are so great because we put a lot of energy out in the crowd mm. and then it's like we get all the energy back on stage and makes us even go even more mm. so once a concert you know is underway it's like it doesn't matter if we've played seek and destroy five thousand times before because it's just it's like it's just a feeling that just makes you go and just play even harder and heavier just for these people here who are putting all this energy back up on stage mm. to you so i mean the answer is really no it doesn't get boring Sometimes it's less than maybe other nights, but most of the time it's just great playing these songs. <laughs> uh, the last thing is that it's not easy to get in the that's very clear. Es sieht halt schon so, wenn man sechs Monate unterwegs ist, äh, dass man manchmal ein bisschen Probleme hat, also sieht das auf eine psychische Art oder dass man einfach auf der Schnur ist. Aber prinzipiell muss ich sagen, bekämpft sie vom Publikum an sich sehr viel zurück, also die ganze Energie und das würde ihnen eigentlich immer wieder auf beihelfen und da muss ich sagen, also prinzipiell langweilig wird es nie. Manchmal muss man einfach so durch ein Loch durch, wo aber mehr über psychologischer Art oder äh, physischer Art sind. Aber wie gesagt, durch die Energie, die sie den Leuten geben und die Leute ihnen zurückgeben, könnten sie an sich über das sehr gut tun. Eine Frage, die ziemlich oft gestellt worden ist, was denkt der Lars persönlich von der ganzen Black Metal und Trash Szenen und konkreter, was haltet er von Texten, die Gewalt, Satanismus und Ähnliches verherrlichen? A lot of people want to hear your opinion about Black Metal and Trash Rock. <lacht> Or more precisely, what do you think about lyrics which glorify violence and satanism and all um, these things? Well, I think the whole, I mean, black metal is generally mostly associated with, you know, satanic bands yeah. and stuff like that. And personally, and also with the way we deal with that sort of stuff is really hate it. Mm. Um, don't really hate it or dislike it for religious reasons. It's just, I think, the whole satanic thing and the black metal thing is just part of the many cliches in heavy metal that I think all of us as a band really dislike and myself really hate <laughs> and I think we try and sort of um, work around a lot of these cliches and a lot of these things that have just been done before and I think the whole you know black metal and the, the sort of satanic thing is part of the most overdone cliche mm -hmm. in heavy metal and it just it just bothers me because it seems like sort of the easy way out of you know getting you know publicity or it's like the easiest way to have an image you know and it just seems so easy it just it's not a challenge you know it's, mm. it seems very boring <laughs> actually and just a lot of thrash bands you know it's just it's great that you know there's a good sort of underground scene and all that but it just seems a lot of them because it's so easy just to play the sort of very basic fast stuff you know just a lot of people just take that way out mm. i mean with us we like to have challenges when you know we write songs and it just all seems so easy and safe <laughs> in a way i just don't like too much of that sort of stuff also kurz auf den ende braucht der lars hätte an sich die szene nicht so verrückt gern nicht aus religiösen gründen nicht aus geschmacklichen gründen er geht einfach davon aus, dass die ganze äh, äh, satanische Szene, die da wie im Heavy Rock predigt wird, das ist einfach auch ein Klischee. Sogar eines von den Klischees, die am meisten gebaut worden ist und da auch dementsprechend äh, abgelatscht und abgelutscht ist. Äh, er persönlich kann einfach nicht damit anfangen, wenn sich Bands mir quasi verkleiden und, und ein Image sich aufbauen, das mit der Musik nichts zu tun hat. Äh, ihm ist es an sich wurscht und er ist sich auch klar, dass es einen gewissen Underground gibt, der durchaus auch äh, ein gewisses Bedürfnis da ist, aber äh, er könnte also mit dem anderen nicht viel anfangen. Für sie ist es halt auch nach wie vor richtig gute Musik und sie würde sich um das eigentlich ein bisschen umtreiben, sie hätten das gar nicht nötig. I think, can I just add some yes. more to that? I think the, um, I think obviously a lot of those bands have a lot of energy and I think mm -hmm. the energy part of it is great, but for, for, you know, when you say, you know, thrash stuff and that kind of thing, it's, um, for energy bands like that I prefer maybe some of the punk bands instead because it seems a bit more real to me mm -hmm. bands like That's Discharge yeah you know, bands like for instance Discharge or an American band called the Misfits mm -hmm. play you know really really fast and you know which most of these thrash bands do too I just think it seems a bit more honest to me you know it uh -huh. doesn't seem like um, why do you think it's it's more honest I don't know just in the music it just I don't know it's difficult to explain why you 
you know, you feel a certain way about things, but it is, to me, when I hear a discharge, for instance, when they play, you know, really, really uh -huh. fast, and they play, you know, maybe faster than most of these other bands, it just sounds more real. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they really mean it. This is a very interesting point. The Lars had a uh, very interesting Anmerkung gemacht, that we vielleicht müssen ein bisschen unterscheiden, sagen wir, zwischen den Trash-Bands, die eben auf dem Heavy-Rock-Business mitschwimmen, oder Bands, die eigentlich mehr zu so richtig Punk gehören, also Discharge oder Misfits, das sind Bands, die ehrlicher sind. Er hätte nicht genau können sagen warum er das findet, aber das sind einfach Bands, die weniger ein Image machen, sondern die sind so, die hegen auf der Wahnsinnsgeschwindigkeit, Wahnsinnsenergie. Und das tut ihnen eigentlich ehrlich, das finde ich noch ganz einen ganz interessanten Punkt. Kommen wir mal zu einer weiteren Runde mit euren Fragen an Lars Ulrich von der Metallica. Da beobachtet zum Beispiel der Dieter aus Basel, dass es unter Heavy Metal Freaks verschiedene Strömungen gibt, die untereinander ziemlich intolerant sind. Also, also unter dem Motto Speed gegen Trash oder Heavy Rock gegen Black Metal. Sieht Lars auch solche Fraktionen und hat da jemals schon wegen diesem Problem gehabt? Uh, I don't think maybe we have direct problems with that, but I just think it's one thing that also bothers me a lot when um, you know you read magazines and mm -hmm. talk. I mean, people are very, very narrow minded, you yes. know, and it's like they only accept that one little thing that mm. they like and it's like I think there's a lot of different reasons for that some people it's um they want to know about do you know the word obscure yes. it's like um they want to find the smallest band that they can find because then they're the only people that know about them and then it's like that it makes them better than anyone else and then as soon as these little obscure bands get get bigger then so you are the only one uh, yeah, it's like you're the who only loves one, this band. It, yeah, and no one else knows about him. It's like, yes, I found him first, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then when they get big, it's like, uh, you know, then uh, they're no good anymore just because other people like him, that kind of thing. I find that's that sort of thinking, mm -hmm. I find very sort of narrow-minded. And I think um, a lot of people, because we started out as being a sort of very underground band, it's like now that we're getting bigger, we're not the ones that are changing. It's the people everywhere that are changing to accept what we do. Mm. You know, we sort of stand by and say, this is what we do. If you like it or not, it doesn't matter to us because we keep on doing it. And it's like Metallica is getting bigger because people are changing from Metallica. And just some people go, oh, they're getting big now. Uh, you know, I don't. they're no good anymore. Mm. We're just the same as we've always been, you know. And uh, I just, it bothers me a little bit because a lot of these sort of small individual groups also have very it's like you know we're the speed metal people mm -hmm. you know so everything else is no good and then some other people you know we like bands like motley Crue and rat so everything's no good i just wish people could sort of take different aspects of the music and just like you know different things about it instead of just being so narrow-minded mm -hmm. and i think for instance us when we either play the metallica music or listen to other stuff we listen to everything play a lot of extreme stuff we don't just play fast we don't just play slow we throw in melodies you know mm. blah 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 trying to it makes it more interesting for us and um also when we listen to stuff we don't just listen to one particular kind of music i mean the stuff we listen to is so varied it just makes it all more interesting to hear different things you mm. know Im Lars ist das also auch schon aufgefallen und da findet so eine Einstellung ziemlich engstirnig das ganze sich seiner Ansicht äh, noch auch ein bisschen ein individuelles Problem. Meistens sieht es so, dass jemand für sich allein eine Band entdeckt, äh, wo niemand es kennt. So kann man sich auch ein bisschen von den Kollegen abheben. Und wenn dann die Band plötzlich Erfolg hat, sprich von vielen Leuten akzeptiert wird, verliert die Band plötzlich an Reiz, weil sie ja quasi nicht mehr für einen allein reserviert ist. Die Metallica haben solche Erfahrungen auch gemacht. Auch sie sind am Anfang von ihrer Karriere eine Art Underground Band gewesen und haben da, wo sie erfolgreich wurden, sind die Probleme auch ein bisschen gehabt. Aber Lars findet so eine Einstellung einfach bierweich. Eine weitere Frage an Lars ist gesehen, was los der Privat für Sound? I think, uh with me and everyone else in the band really it's like um like we talked about before we don't just hear one thing i mean what we hear is so vast and it's like different for what kind of mood you're in mm -hmm. sometimes it's great just sticking your head in the stereo and listen to like the fastest discharge stuff just to sort of get you know some aggressions out sometimes you listen for musicianship um hear like rush or deep purple you know good mm -hmm. heavy metal songs sometimes you listen to um Stuff that's a little more subtle, you know, um, like uh, Shark Day, <laughs> really. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everyone in the band just listens to, you know, different stuff for different mm. times. You know, James <clears throat> at the moment really likes um, stuff like Roxy Music and mm. Queen and K 
Kate Bush and Kirk and Cliff at the moment really like this band from America, which I personally don't like, called R.E.M., mm -hmm. which is sort of, it's like American country rock or something weird, like it's really boring. And then there's a band that actually all of us like from England called The Cult. Yes. It's not Blue Oyster Cult. Yes, I know. A band called The Cult, which are great. And just, I think that the older, you know, the more we learn about what we're doing ourselves and understand that whole thing, the more we're just open to all different kinds of music, mm. you know, of course, there's a traditional heavy metal you like, you know, like Deep Purple and, you know, Rainbow and, you know, Old Iron Maiden and so forth. At the moment, I really like this band that I've never really been into too much before, which is Rush, for instance, mm. and, um, you know, different things. I've found lately that I like listening to a lot of the older stuff also. Um, lately, I've just been listening to some old status quo, some old Uriah Heep, you know, and it's interesting, like, how music back then, it was like each band had their own distinct, different sound from each mm -hmm. other, whereas I think one of the bigger problems today with heavy metal is that they just tend to all just sound the same, you know? Zeit mit wem auch zusammen wahrscheinlich. Also sie lassen sich auch sehr stark beeinflussen von, von diversen Stilrichtungen, das ist ganz wahnsinnig wichtig. Was immer wieder Bands früher, also die erwähnten Status Quo oder Uriah Heep oder Deep Purple, hatten einen ganz eigenen Sound, gehabt, unverwechselbar. Und das ist heute wahrscheinlich ein bisschen das Problem vom Heavy Rock, dass alles ein bisschen ähnlich tönt und da sehen sie sich auch für sie ein bisschen an sich eine Lücke, eine Marktlücke, weil sie eben nicht so sich auf ein Stil -Ding festlegen. What do you <laughs> <laughs> They talk a lot. <laughs> no, um... Well, we <laughs> <laughs> This is the best answer you can give. Auf die Frage, was auch von Musikjournalisten halten. Ich habe zuerst gefunden, sie schwätzen ein bisschen viel, aber äh, was würde man ohne sie machen? Es ist wie mit den Frauen. <laughs> Now another question from Roland. Roland? Roland from Baden, der Roland aus Baden. <lacht> er fragt, was für Ratschläge man eine Speedband, die frisch anfängt, geben können, und damit sie einen eigenen Stil bekommen. He wants to know what kind of advice you can give to a Speedband. Speedband? Yes, yes, which, which uh, oh, no. is new starting. Yeah, I mean, the general thing, which is, you know, people always go, you know, what advice you give to young bands standing up, starting out, it's just basic answer. It's like, it's try and do something, try and find some way of putting something fresh into what you're mm. doing try and if you can be you know because it depends what your it depends what your goals are if you just want to if you're just playing for yourself to have fun you just want to stay in the garage all the time which is mm. absolutely nothing wrong with you can do you know, whatever you want just you know play what you want to play and don't listen to what anyone else tells you what to play not mm. even me but if you want to maybe get out of the garage and travel a little bit and play to some other people I mean, in 1986, you just have to try and do something a little bit new. Mm. And it's like, I know that's very difficult, but if you can find some way of putting something a little bit fresh or different into your music, then you're already a lot better off than most other bands. Mm. Ganz einfach äh, die Frage zu beantworten. Spielt, was ihr wollt, spielt, was ihr könnt, lernt euch nicht groß beeinflussen, versucht neu zu sein, versucht frisch zu sein, so wie das Metallica und sich mit ihrer eigenen Karriere gemacht haben. Immer versuchen, einfach eigen zu sein, selber zu sein, sich nicht etwas aufschwätzen, also auch wenn Lars es euch würde sagen, sei es so und so, glaube auch das nicht. Die haben einfach das machen, was die für gut finden. Äh, Guy called Remo, Remo. vom Frauenfeld, uh, wrote that... Uh, yeah. It's in the eastern part of Switzerland, where you go, probably. Uh, der Remo schreibt, er bezieht sich auf die Fotosession im Metalhammer, wo die Metallica mit Alkoholika passiert haben. <lacht> You remember probably this photo session in uh, Metal Hammer with booze. Uh, uh, do you require such promotion, is the question. Do we require such promotion? Yeah, with booze what? and, and, and alcohol. Like oh, this. God. Um, I know what he's getting at. I don't know. I mean... You're not sponsored by... By, uh, by Schmirnoff. <laughs> <laughs> Although it would be a lot cheaper for us if we were. <laughs> no, um, I know what he's trying to say. I think um, I mean, we're not necessarily trying to promote alcohol or anything like that it was um an idea that came up from a photographer in england to do these and um we went along with it just sort of as a joke i don't think anyone mm. should take it serious and metallica is either trying to promote alcohol or saying that we're alcoholics or anything you know of course we like everyone else like to have the occasional drink <coughs> and uh <laughs> you know it was just 
something to do, and we did it, mm. and that's really all there is to it. I can't really say much more about it, you know. The last can't be too much of a talk. They have just for that's what they have shared. They have looked. Sie werden auch nicht gesponsert von einer Whisky-Firma oder von einer Bierfirma, wo wieder einige finanzielle Probleme würde an sich lösen, aber das ist kein Thema für ihn, also die Folge sind überhaupt irrelevant. Das ist ein Scherz, was sie gemacht haben und es sollte auch nicht der Eindruck entstehen, ob Metallica sind jetzt galoppierende Alkoholiker mit Gitarren um den Hals. Battery, eine erste Kostprobe aus dem neuen Album von der Metallica mit dem Titel Master of Puppets, äh, wo nächsten Freitag in der Schweiz rauskommt. Der Lars Ulrich hat, wie gesagt, die neue Platte mitgebracht. Und meine Frage an ihn ist natürlich, warum ist es, weiss Gott, so lange gegangen, bis die Metallica mit einem neuen Werk, Werk auf den Markt gekommen sind? <lacht> <lacht> well, I think, um, first of all, we're really, really slow songwriters. You know, we play maybe fast, but actually getting the stuff together takes some time, uh, because we want to make sure that the songs we write, you know, as good as we can, you know, make them. And, um, also because we're now with you know a big label in america and um the money is available there's this is the first album that we've made where there's not been a financial sort mm -hmm. of limit limits or whatever so we've just had as much time in the studio as we wanted um because of that you know a lot of bands go into the studio and it's like they get a guitar sound they get a drum sound and then they record the whole album on that sound because i think on the new album There's so many different um, feels, so many different moods, so many different things that keep changing over the course of the album. For every one of those different things, we had a different sound mm. and tried to make sure that the sound we put down on tape was the best that we could get for that individual part. And because of that, it just took a long time. We spent, you know, five months on the album. And I think it took a little bit longer than we thought it would. But then again, there was not really a lot of times, you know, People say, oh, it took longer than you thought. You must have had problems. We didn't have any problems. We just didn't know that we would sort of take as long because it was the first time we had that freedom to really go about mm. doing things the way we wanted. And um, that's basically the reason it's coming out a little later than we said, you know, maybe six months ago that it would. But there's not really been any problems. Mm. Also es hat keine Probleme gegeben. Es ist nicht wegen dem, dass die Platte äh, später als geplant rausgekommen sind. Der wichtigste Grund ist, glaube ich, auch, dass Metallica jetzt in einer Position sind, wo sie sich ein bisschen Zeit nehmen können, dass sie auch bei einem größeren Label sind, dass sie, haben können, äh, nicht mehr, also dass sie nicht mehr haben müssen auf die Finanzen Rücksicht nehmen. Sie haben wirklich können, einfach jetzt mal sich Zeit nehmen, im Studio ihnen ihre Songs zu machen. Sie sind auch nicht so schnell als Songwriter, wie sie können spielen können, <lacht> sondern sie brauchen einfach ihre Zeit. Und sie haben das richtig genossen und haben auch versucht, äh, vielfältiger zu im Studio, also verschiedene Stils zu brauchen, verschiedene Stimmungen auch zu verarbeiten, nicht einfach mit einem Sound ins Studio reinzugehen und dann wieder raus, sondern effektiv mit dem Studio zu arbeiten. I heard before some tracks from a cassette and my first impression was that uh, Metallica are kind of less speedy but more heavy, let's say, uh, a bit more traditional, is that true? Who's, who's saying that? That was my impression when I heard this cassette. Hmm. Ah. Uh. I don't think because you're less speedy doesn't mean you're more traditional. Um, and I don't think we're less speedy than, for instance, we were in the last album. As a matter of fact, I mean, speedy, I just... It's just a do, word. Yeah, I know. It just seems so stupid to sort of break down everything in those categories. I think generally, um, because the sounds on this album are so much better than I think we've had before, mm. the whole album maybe comes across as a little bit heavier. Um, you know, there's still two songs on the new album that are very sort of in the old style, but sort of maybe three years better, if you understand what, I'm, mm -hmm. what yes. I mean with that. And um, traditional, I actually think that um, when I listen to the album, it sounds quite different from most other bands. I don't hear too many other bands around today that um, sort of go through as many different feels as we do on an album. If you take the, say, um, two extremes of the new album, the amount of ground that's covered mm -hmm. between the two extremes of this album is so big mm -hmm. and so vast. I don't hear too many other bands today that sort of, you know, that varied in what they do. Mm -hmm. And um, we're not being varied to please anyone other than ourselves. It's just, it's more fun to try and do something different, have each song sound different from the one before. Mm -hmm. And then you just sort of end up being a bit varied, you know. When I, when I said traditional, more traditional, I thought more about the roots. Yeah, what roots? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, 
roots of it's music. Like, I mean, you know, doesn't everything sound like Deep Purple or Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath if you go that far back? Mm -hmm. It's like, um, it's like how far back, you know, where, where, how, you know, where do you stop with that? Um, I never everyone, stop. <laughs> yeah, isn't everyone just ripping everyone else off in that okay. sense? Um, you know, I just think that, um, you know, it's difficult for me to really answer what you're saying other than just saying that I think we're playing better than we have before. It, the, the songs are better written, better structured. Um, the whole thing just works better as a mm -hmm. full album. Um, I think we're finding a style that we started with Ride the Lightning and that we now are getting really, really comfortable with, with this the, the sort of style and not just doing one thing. It's yes. just being very open-minded to sort of taking any direction within that sort of style that we do on, on any song it's just varying it all the time it seems a lot more interesting for us and just like we talked about before just taking the easy way out mm. and writing you know short you know four minute songs and we're happy in that without sounding you know big head or that, we're happy and that's really mm. what counts <laughs> and also es ist ganz interessant. Ich habe Lars glaube ich gerade jetzt ein bisschen Schleuder gebraucht wo ich gesagt habe Tradition, das Wort traditionell gebraucht habe er findet an sich, dass sie versuchen, einfach das so vielfältig wie möglich zu sein, dass es völlig klar ist, dass man immer wieder einmal äh, einfach Anleihen macht an Black Sabbath und Deep Purple oder Led Zeppelin. Das hat aber nicht mit dem zu tun, dass sie das wollen, sondern dass sie auch jetzt Möglichkeiten haben, ihre eigenen Stil, ihre eigenen äh, Gefühl, das, was sie ihre Musik nennen, können ausdrücken im Studio, durch dass sie eben nicht mehr die Beschränkung haben von, von der finanziellen Seite her. Und dass da ganz klar ist, dass sie einfach ein relativ grosses Feld vor der von dem Heavy Rock oder wie man es auch nicht, nicht immer nennen will, kann abdecken und durch das man halt auch ein bisschen für bessere Qualität hat auf der Platte, dass da vielleicht einiges bekannt tönt, aber ich glaube nicht, dass sie bewusst jetzt würde traditioneller tönen. Sie haben sich eigentlich auf selber so entwickelt, dass sie ihren Sound und sie sind sehr zufrieden mit dem. Die Gesprächsrunde mit dem Lars Alrik ähm, träumen von der Metallica ein und mir würde interessieren, auf was er mehr jetzt steht, auf der Arbeit im Plattenstudio oder aufs Spielen auf einer Bühne. Um, <lacht> Is it totally different for you? Yeah, uh, I think, you know, it's a challenge to do the whole thing with writing songs and working in the studio and trying to, I think Metallica in a way is like two dis distinct or different sort of well, not different bands, but there's two very distinct different sides to Metallica. It is the whole thing with writing songs mm -hmm. and working in the studio. We take that very, very seriously. And when we're in the studio, if some of the people who just know us from live or something could like hear, hear us in the studio and how we work and what we talk about in the studio, I think they would be a bit surprised how serious we take that whole side of it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the other side of that, which is when you're you know playing live you're obviously on tour and you have very few responsibilities <laughs> and can just sort of uh you just play your music and you know drink and i mean that's sort of the other side of it where you don't take really anything serious apart from it's just great being on stage you know every night and you know getting all the aggression out and all that for an hour and a half or mm -hmm. whatever there's like two different things i think maybe the one thing of being in the studio is a bit more of a challenge to sort of make it work and sort of you have these songs and start recording them and just it's, it's like interesting to see how it builds up and mm. then all of a sudden you have an album there <laughs> and then just being on tour is great for what it is just playing all the time traveling around meeting people you know having the occasional drink <laughs> i think this, so this is really great it's you can do both have fun and, and work yeah. yeah i think maybe I don't know if it's less fun, it's maybe a little less fun in the studio, but it's more sort of a challenge, mm -hmm. it's something you have to like, it's like something you approach and say, yeah, we're gonna, you know, really make a good album and so forth, and then when the album's behind, you don't really worry more about it, you just go out and tour and play and, you know, have a great time. Mm -hmm. Also, ganz auch da wieder klare Antwort, die Antwort ist ja ein oder sowohl als auch sein, die eine Seite ist die Studioarbeit, also der Lars schafft sehr gerne im Studio, weil das ist ganz eine Herausforderung. Man schafft sehr seriös auch. Äh, man würde neue Erfahrungen machen, würde experimentieren. Auf der Bühne, das ist genau, halt sich der Plausch einfach, das ist genauso wichtig wie die Studioarbeit. Das ist oft anders. Man kann spielen. Es ist ein harter Job, zweifellos, aber man, man hat gewisse Verantwortlichkeiten nicht. Es ist vielleicht nicht die Herausforderung wie im Studio, aber äh, es ist einfach also genauso wichtig, live zu spielen mit den Leuten. Das ist oft wahnsinnig. Lars, thank you very much to answer all these all right. questions. It's good being here and hearing Coming, all these interesting hearing, questions. Yes, yes, I think so.
Uh, you're on promotion tour. What's your next destination? Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> Helsinki, Finland. Oh, it's I leave for cold. Day. Yes, and it's far away. I leave for Helsinki tonight, and spend you know full day in Helsinki mm. doing stuff there, and then Copenhagen for a couple of days, my hometown, and then off to Amsterdam, Brussels, you know. Um, mm. Germany, Munich, just everywhere. <laughs> By the time this whole thing's over, I've been like in every country in Western Europe, pretty much. So. I see. The last bedanks sich also auch bei euch für all eure Fragen. Das ist sehr interessant. Ich sehe schon auf Promotionstournee. Also er muss auch seine Platten ein bisschen unter die Leute bringen. Er reist nach Finnland ab. Nach